Okay, here we go. All right, today's quick lecture or mini lecture is called Systems Learning. Um, and the subtitle here is pretty obvious what we're aiming for. We're aiming to maximize the ability to learn quickly and this should lead us towards success with new courses um, for the semester. Here we go. So one of the main things that we're looking at here is the idea of critical thinking because anytime you enter a new class or in fact you enter a new situation, you might have to assess what's going on around you and adapt uh, your thinking methods. This is one of the most important mental flexibility skills that is really sought after these days by in new employers. As the world continues to speed up in terms of new technologies, uh, new information methods for conveying information between markets and businesses, employers really want people who can adapt quickly to new methods, to new systems, if you would. So this idea of having a critical thinking skill set is really connected to being employable. So let's look a little bit more in depth in this area. So one of the most important things you can kind of connect this idea of systems learning to is the ability to analyze an environment and then adapt and fit into that environment quickly. For me personally, um, I, I'm a bit of a rebel in the way that in the way that I that I kind of think of myself or live my life. But nevertheless, if you can look at a new space that you're moving into with a shrewd and intelligent mindset and then figure out what's going on around you, what are the what are the, the rules that are in place or the systems that are in place, the guidelines that are in place, and adapt yourself to work within that environment, you're gonna have a better chance of being successful. So some people kind of think, well, oh, I don't I don't want to fit into a new system. I wanna be, I wanna stand out. That's okay. You can still make yourself a, a person who stands out through how effective and quickly you learn. So learn your environment, fit in, learn the rules, adapt and, and thrive. So this is particularly important whenever you're moving into a new class or a new job. The, employers say that it takes anywhere from six to nine months to train a person in a new role. So imagine if you could cut that time in half. So what if you could learn the parameters of a new environment in, in, in a third of the time or half the time that a normal candidate would, obviously this is gonna really put you in an advantageous position. So in terms of new classes, your goal should be to absorb what your instructor is hoping the students will be able to do within the first week or two. One of the best ways you can do this is to ask a lot of questions. Um, if something seems like it doesn't make sense or doesn't click for you, write down the specific question and then make sure that if your instructor opens up a chance for you to, you know, ask anything at the end of class, that's a perfect time for you to say, well, when you mentioned this thing, I didn't quite get what you meant by that. Could you clarify that? Most instructors are very open to new questions, uh, questions from new students. I, I am in my classes. So make sure to write them down and then ask them. So another idea here is being deliberate. So when you're moving into a new environment, even just reminding yourself, hey, this is a new environment. I'm gonna have a lot of information coming at me. How can I capture the information? Be deliberate, take notes. Now, when you're in the classroom, you've got a device for this, you've got your notebook, maybe you've got a, um, an iPad or, or a, a, some sort of a technological device to help you capture information. Use whatever works for you, but try to capture the details so that you can review them later. Because the amount of information coming at you at the beginning of a new adventure or endeavor or opportunity, because there's so much information coming at you, unless you have a really great memory, you're probably gonna miss some things. So by being deliberate, by taking notes, um, by reviewing that later, by trying to crystallize that and rewrite it, you're going to improve your ability to maximize the new learning, the, the new system, the new environment. So one of the things um, that I always notice as an instructor when I'm looking at a new group of students is, I'm always gonna be looking to see who stands out as being engaged in the learning process. People who engage become stakeholders. A stakeholder is someone who has skin in the game, if you would, someone who is committed to the process, someone who is buying in and trying to 
find their place and contribute. That's the main point, right? Contribution. Can you add something? And when I meet a new group of students, there's always going to be a few members who stand out. And immediately I kind of think, okay, that, that person's kind of like going to become a leader within this class. And they're going to take on a high level of stakeholdership. I find the best way to do that is through being open-minded. So this is an, another synonym for mental flexibility. If you're moving into an environment and you're open, you're like, whatever's coming at me, I'm going to try to take it in. I'm going to try to absorb it. I'm going to try to write it down. I'm going to try to organize it and memorize it later. Um, so by having that mental flexibility, you stand out as a stakeholder. So these are kind of four different ways to look at critical thinking and leverage it towards fitting in in a class or maximizing and increasing your employability when you finish your upgrading or your studies in university. And then let's take a minute now. So just take a minute on your notebook, try to write down, brainstorm if you would, different types of systems that we might find in, in our daily life when we're moving into a new environment that we have to learn quickly. Okay, so obviously I'm just going to push on with my presentation, but if you want, you can pause the video and do your one minute brainstorm now, and then we'll move into looking at some systems that you might encounter at Vancouver Island University and specifically in my classes. Okay, so here are some example examples of systems that you will likely have to adapt to and learn at VIU. First of all, we've got VIU Learns. Now in all of my classes, I use the VIU Learns portal as a textbook, a digital textbook. It's also a place where students will be able to submit their assignments. All assignments in my classes come in through VIU Learns. So right away it becomes really crucial for you to become comfortable with VIU Learns and there's all kinds of technological support that I will clarify uh, through VIU that will help you to become comfortable with that system. But moving around in VIU Learns, it is a system within itself, even from the basics of how to log in. So we'll talk about how you can access the contents and assignments as we move forward with our learning. So the next one that's a really big one is that in any class that you're taking at VIU, you're going to encounter different standards for grading. Every professor kind of has their own rubrics, their own systems for marking that they use, and additionally their own feedback methods that they use. So for my classes, it's, it's the same. Uh, we all have the same standard of like what the percentage mark you get in your class, like what grade that equals. The professors can't shift that, but how they mark the assignments, what specifically they're looking for within their assignment parameters, and then how they give you feedback, this will differ for every uh, professor. Uh, in particular for my methods, I use what I call a deductive marking method, which basically means that at the beginning, when a student submits an assignment to me, they start with a 100%, they start with a perfect assignment, and then I'm looking through to make sure they're meeting all of the parameters. And then for every deviation from the parameters that I see, for every like mistake or um, every grammar error, I'll take a slight little mark off. So I'm de deducing or deducting, taking away a point based on errors. Okay, so the next system that you might encounter uh, at VIU that you will in my classes for sure is the library website. Um, this is another example of how the world is becoming more digital and how becoming comfortable with digital information is really going to be important for students and professionals moving forward. So learning how to utilize the library website to gather research materials um, is, is crucial in my classes. So finally, each professor is going to submit a syllabus to their students for, their, for each class at the beginning of the class. Now the syllabus is it's like a course outline. It probably also covers what the learning outcomes you're going to be trying to meet are. Uh, for my syllabi, I include a weekly schedule that is, it's predictive, so it's, it's hope we hopefully we'll be able to follow that schedule. But at the same time, uh, you might deviate based on every class's learning speed and the group of individuals within the class. So it's a guideline, but we try to stick to it. And then finally, every professor, every teacher, every instructor has different expectations. So learning your professor's expectations is crucial to becoming a successful student in those classes because you can't expect the professor to adapt to every student in their class. Of course, a good instructor will try to make things as attainable for every student as possible. 
but if every professor has a class of 90, for example, my classes are usually around 26, but some of the full-time courses up the hill in like biology or in English, first year English, they're really big classes. Um, so the professor can't change the lessons and expectations for each of the 90 students. That's madness, right? Um, so students do have to kind of figure out what the professor wants or what the instructor wants.